Hey guys, once again, I hope this video finds you well. Uh, this is Mr. G. Today we are going to be talking about the digestive system. Now, we have just uh, covered the uh, enzymes and one of the things that is important about enzymes is that they are very much used in your digestive system and they're going to be using your digestive system as a way of breaking down the food. It's gonna help with the breaking down of the food that is going to happen in your digestive system so uh, kind of two topics that are connected to one another knowing the digestive system and how it functions with enzymes that we have just talked about now the essential statement here we have is describe the interaction that occurs among systems that perform the functions of nutrient absorption in animals and the most important part to remember here is that nutrient absorption part you have to understand that uh, nutrient absorption is what happens whenever we have uh, food being processed through your stomach is going to be broken down in your stomach and then it's going to be um, absorbed through some more capillaries and we want to learn about what those are in just a minute but uh, they're going to be absorbed through your uh, circulatory system uh, and the small intestine is going to allow it to move into all of the parts of your body like your arms or your brain or even your legs down there so all the food that you're initially consuming has to break down at one point and that's going to happen with the help of enzymes, all right? Um, you also, you have to understand that this is going to happen with the interaction of many different systems. Systems like, for example, the um, muscular system, which is going to have a lot of different muscles around your mouth, which are going to help chew on the food and then swallow. And once you have swallowed the food, there's even muscles around your uh, esophagus which are going to help push the food down. We're going to learn what that is called in just a second. But once it even gets to your stomach, there's a lot of muscles in your stomach, also some muscles around your small intestine and large intestine. So there is an interaction between the digestive and the muscular system. Uh, even the uh, nervous system will have a role in this. And also another system like the endocrine system, which is responsible for making uh, a lot of the... Um, enzymes a lot of the proteins that are used in this process all right so make sure that you write an essential question from this this is just a statement right here make sure that you make this into an essential question by making it into a question all right um, so the first part that we're going to see is the digestible molecules we have talked about these already uh, these are the fats the carbohydrates and the proteins there these are very very important biomolecules that we have talked about you have to remember the difference between them. It is crucial that you uh, now know what the difference is between their functions, between their elements, and their structures. All right. Uh, now, there's another type of molecule here, which is vitamins. Now, keep in mind, vitamins are very important for your diet as well. They're found in things like bananas or any type of fruit and vegetables, uh, but they're not biomolecules, okay? Only fats or, in other words, lipids carbohydrates proteins these are going to be biomolecules which are essential for our bodies to consume okay they have more bodies have to have these inside of them in order to be able to survive also vitamins they're really really important for us but keep in mind these are not biomolecules um, we're missing one biomolecule here make sure that you can guess which one it is all right so now we're going to go into the functions of the digestive organs and there is going to be many different organs that are going to be responsible for digestion, okay? Uh, now, the function of this organ is simply to break down food and later absorb it in the forms of nutrients. Uh, we're going to convert food into simpler substances that the body can absorb. Now, what does that mean is that, well, we go trying to go from polymers, which are going to be the starches, are going to be the... Uh, big biomolecules which are all attached together remember these are polymers and we're trying to break them down uh, into their monomer types such as glucose now how does your body do the breaking down well there's two different types of digestion and when we say digestion would really mean the breaking down part all right uh, the first one is going to be chemical digestion and chemical digestion is going to happen when uh, you have the help of different enzymes so you're going to have enzymes found in the mouth uh, there's going to be others found in the stomach and even some enzymes are going to be found inside of the first part of the small intestine and this part of the small intestine is going to be called 
that duo denim. So um, most of the small intestine is not going to be breaking down anything. Everything will be mostly broken down in the stomach and in the mouth, but yet some of it is going to be broken down in the small intestine in a part that we call the duo denim. Okay, so when we say chemical digestion, I want you to think about those chemicals. Okay, and chemicals are going to be in the form of enzymes that we talked about so far. The other type of digestion is going to be mechanical digestion, and just uh, mechanical, what that means is breaking down the food with your teeth and also breaking it down by using muscles. So food is gonna be broken down in your teeth when you chew on it, so you're using muscles to break it down uh, with your teeth. And then you're going to be using muscles in your stomach to bur farther break it down even more. So when you hear like your stomach is growling or something like that, that simply means that your uh, there are muscles in the stomach that are going to be moving and breaking down the food. So remember that the purpose is again to go from polymers to monomers and we want to do that with the help of enzymes okay but remember that you also have mechanical digestion which is going to be breaking down with your teeth and your muscles okay so, all right so the next part that we're going to see here is that the digestive system is composed of different organs and glands that will hydrolyze and hydrolyze simply means to break down. So every time that I use the word hydrolysis or hydrolyze, uh, what that means is that we are actually going to break down the food to provide fuel for the body. So hydrolyze just means to break down. Now this food is going to be converted into particles that are simple enough, uh, which, which we're just gonna call microparticles or micro micromolecules uh, that are the monomers that can actually be absorbed into the bloodstream and used by the body. So keep in mind that um, when we have biomolecules, biomolecules, remember that these are the um, macromolecules. So macromolecules, whoops, macromolecules are the big molecules, so like your carbohydrates and your lipids, your polymer forms, which I cannot be absorbed by your um, by your body. However, what your body does is that it breaks it down into their monomer forms so that it can actually absorb some of this into the bloodstream. And the bloodstream here is just talking about obviously the circulatory system. So some of the parts that are important to remember are the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, uh, the gallbladder, the small intestine, and the pancreas and the large intestine. This is where most of the digestion is going to occur. Um, now, what happens at the mouth? Well, the mouth is going to be responsible for breaking food mechanically. So in the mouth, we have mechanical digestion. However, we also have chemical digestion. And this is one of the enzymes that is important to remember, okay? Salivary amylase, uh, remember, every time you see that ACE, we're talking about an enzyme, so salivary amylase is going to be an enzyme that will mechanically, uh, uh, chemically, I'm sorry, break down or hydrolyze carbohydrates. So every time that you're chewing on some carbohydrates, that are, um, some of it is found in apple. Apples are actually are a good source of uh, sugars. And every time that you put this in your mouth, well, you're going to break it down mechanically with your teeth. And also you're going to break it down um, chemically with the help of salivary amylase. And salivary amylase is simply uh, saliva. There's a lot of enzyme in your saliva called salivary amylase. And the function is to break down carbohydrates. So for example, whenever you put starch, um, like a polymer, this is going to be broken down into glucose or monomer. Uh, then it's going to enter the esophagus, okay? So once it enters the esophagus, well, there's going to be smooth muscles in the esophagus that are going to pretty much push on the food all the way down. And I don't know if you ever tried this, but have, you can actually um, hang upside down and you can swallow some food and believe it or not, the food will still travel down, or I guess in this case, since you are upside down, 
uh, Eutrabo app into your stomach. And that is because you have these um, muscles that are going to push the food down. Well, this process, we call it peristalsis. Okay, and that's what happens when you have the muscles in your esophagus pushing the food down into the stomach. Um, the next part is going to be in the stomach, and that's when the food gets um, more broken down. So once the stomach receives the food uh, from the esophagus, it is going to pretty much uh, disinfect the food by killing all the bacteria that is present. And again, not all of it is going to die, but most of the bacteria is going to die from there. Um, and that's going to happen because the stomach has a very low pH, it's very acidic. Uh, in fact, it has what we call hydrochloric acid. Uh, and that's another type of chemical that will break down some of that food. So some of the digestion that's going to happen in the stomach is mechanical because um, the stomach obviously is going to uh, use muscles to break food down. But uh, digestion of proteins will begin there because we have the help of another enzyme which is called pepsin, okay? And pepsin is going to be responsible for breaking down those proteins into their simple form of amino acids, all right? So uh, what happens next? Well, next the food is going to travel to the duodenum and the duodenum is that very first section of the small intestine. Now, in that small section of the small intestine, what is going to happen is that your gallbladder is going to release bile salts and these bile salts are going to go there to actually break down a lot of the lipids that we consume. Uh, now, let me show you guys what that looks like. So when you compare the sizes of fat droplets that are actually inside of your stomach, this is normally what these fat droplets look like once they get into your stomach. But once they travel to the duodenum, the very small section of the small intestine, they're going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the reason why this is happening is because the... Uh, bio salts are going to be breaking it down. So without the bio salt, this is what uh, it looks like. Now, when you add those bio salts in it, well, now the uh, fat droplets are going to look small and smaller. So the last thing that happens is, well, the food will continue to travel to the small intestine, and once it gets to the um, farther part of the duodenum, well, in here, what's going to happen is that some lipase, which is another enzyme, is going to break down more lipids. And remember, we're trying to go from polymer to monomer, uh, so we're trying to hydrolyze the lipids uh, into glycerols and fatty acids. Uh, once it gets to the larger part of the small intestine, all of this right here, this is where nutrient absorption is going to happen for those monomers of carbs, proteins, and lipids. Uh, and then the food is going to be absorbed through very small, tiny, finger-like projections that are called villi. Now, the villi are tiny cells inside of the small intestine, which are going to be responsible for absorbing these um, uh, molecules into your uh, circulatory system. So you think of this like tiny, very, very tiny little fingers that will absorb these biomolecules, and they're is going to put it into the um, a bloodstream into the circulatory system. Remember, if it was a polymer, there's no way that the polymer can get through. It has to be in the monomer form because these are very, very tiny and we call them the villi. All right? So villi sends the nutrients to the bloodstream from the delivery to cells. Once it goes to this bloodstream, it goes to every single part of your cells. So the last thing is, um, well, okay, what happens next? Once you have absorbed, whatever is not absorbed is going to be waste and most of it is going to be uh, stored in the last part of the large intestine. All that the large intestine is going to do is just absorb the water that, and the rest is just going to be uh, kept in the rectum until eventually it can exit through the anus and be eliminated. Right? So that's all that I'm going to have for you for today guys. Um, I'm going to ask you to please keep that essential question in mind when you answer the summary for your sections and as always thank you for listening to me and I will see you again in another video very soon.